Right. Anyway, so our lab was on volleyball, and um, we were talking about the impulse of different types of hits. So there are three different types of hits we use, which were the set, so like this, then a bump, like this, and then the serve. And we were going to compare uh, which ones had higher impulse, which is um, like force times time. So it's, uh, but we use. Uh, change in velocity times the mass, um, and it's like a form of momentum. So we just took videos of them in really slow motion with this cool uh, high-speed camera that Doc lent us, and then from there we were able to, fi uh, to find the two velocities um, of the volleyballs and. Uh, we found the change in velocity from that and then multi multiplied it by the mass to find impulse. So this one is a set that only has impulse of 1.57. And then the bump is um, 0.93, or 993, but I'm not sure if that's right. I haven't seen this one yet. And then the uh, impulse of the serve is much higher. Um, and we were talking about how that's probably because, I mean, I was expecting the bump to be higher because it changes direction so much. Um, and it is uh, a vector. So I was thinking that that would have a big influence on it. But the impulse of the serve is so great because if, you, if you're bumping, normally you're just hitting it like straight up, not very far or anything like that. But a serve, you have to get it all the way over the net. And usually, you have, I mean, you have to hit it a lot harder. Um, so these are just some of the equations we use. Um, so error was kind of difficult for this one because, I mean, there wasn't much that we could do error on. We found the impulse. It was really inaccurate. I mean, there was a lot of sources of error because the videos were hard to use um, due to the, uh, the quality. Because the frame rate was so high, you couldn't get very good quality from the video, uh, it just was really, we could get it into really slow motion besides that. Um, so the last part we talked about was um, a top spin serve compared to a float serve. The two types of serves whenever you're serving a volleyball is, uh, the regular one is like a float serve where you hit it flat on with your palm in the center of the ball and it goes over without much spin. And that one is what most people use and has like a regular, um, like, parabolic motion path um, and usually it's a little bit more unpredictable because if it's floating it's kind of like a knuckleball in baseball where it can kind of go uh, to either side but um, the top spin serve is a little bit different where you curl your hand over as you hit the ball and it spins it like this which um, then makes it fall a lot faster so you can drop it closer to the net um, also allows you to serve faster uh, so that's that's usually a little bit harder to return, which is why a lot of people like using that. But it's I mean, it's kind of hard to do. Um, we wanted to find out what caused that, so um, we looked it up on the internet. We were able to look at videos of people using a top uh, uh, top spin, and so this explanation is showing. So the ball is going this way, and the air is going against it this way, and since um, it's spinning this way, creating more pressure um, on the bottom, I think. And because of the spin, it um, is pulled downward more. Um, so that makes it fall faster because there's a force downward from the air as opposed to Bernoulli's this equation. way. Yeah. Um, and also, we couldn't do error on this because, um, I mean, it was, we were serving with non-professional people, so we couldn't get like a very constant float serve to top spin serve kind of thing. But besides that, it was. We weren't I have a question. This is, this is the Did you investigate the force of a bump, a set, or a spike? Yeah. Well, that came with. Like the if you divide by the um, momentum or impulse equation is the same as 
force times time, changing time. So if you were to divide the impulse by the amount of time. Did you? We didn't, but I could. I mean, we can. If you look at these. I think that would be awesome. The, the hard, it's kind of hard to see on these because they're really small. But if you look at the bottom of these, there's like a small amount of time where the force is actually happening. So if you divide it by that time, you'd be able to find the force on it. Which so we we're like, going to do that by uh, to find error, where we could find the force and which direction, and then we could solve for like um, distance or time in the air. Uh, uh, using like a kinematic equation, but the problem is none of our videos had like the full flight path, so we didn't know. There wasn't enough room to get like the whole path of the ball after they hit it, especially with the serves, because the, we wanted to do the most with the serves as far as like air resistance and top spin versus float, but like we couldn't get far enough back to see it from the side to get the initial velocity plus the whole path of the ball, so we could only really do like comparisons with other like the just the time and not like velocity and stuff which is why we couldn't really do any calculations for air resistance or for um, like the difference between the top spin and float but so the force is just like the same as the the or not the same as the impulse but if you take the whole time that it's in their hands from when it first enters to when it leaves and you divide the impulse by that time that would be the force that they exerted on it could you scroll up? I was interested in comparing how much time the set takes. The set, set takes, takes quite a, bit a long time. time. Because whenever you're setting, it hits your hands and you like kind of pull your fingers back and then it's kind of like flicking So you kind it back of absorb outwards. all of the force and then like push it, not absorb all the force. But yeah, I don't like that language. Sorry, okay, so <laughs> it's like, you do work. yeah, so instead of with the set and the hit where you're basically just like, I know, it's like a smack and it's just a really short amount of time. The set, like, you take it all the way back in and then you do work on the ball. Which is probably why the impulse is higher on the set than on the bump. Because if you're multiplying by change in time, the bump is only, I mean, multiplied by this amount right here. And I mean, I guess the forces would be different too, but... Uh, also, it was really hard on. to control the incoming velocity. As you can see, they're different for the set and the bump by quite a bit. And so that was one of the problems we were having with, like, because for both the set and the bump, you just, like, toss it in, but you had to have, like, the perfect angle and distance every time to get the same well, incoming different, velocity. There's different kinds of tosses, too. Like, yeah. the set is usually higher than the set. Um, it seems like you're putting incoming and outgoing velocities as being opposite to one another, but they're very definitely vectors. Yeah, Will you make sure? I, uh, this is a, a resultant position. That's the time. Uh, oh, I meant, yeah, I meant to point that. But uh, we took both um, x and y um, into this. So this isn't, this isn't just one direction. Really? Yeah. We took okay, I'll have to read about that. That, okay, that seems confusing. Position. But the, velo the incoming velocity is a vector, and the outgoing velocity is another vector, and they have an angle relative to each other. Yeah. That's what I'm concerned about. Okay. We weren't really sure what to do about that, because I don't know, it was really confusing, especially because, like, with the different stuff, like the angle of the ball sometimes, like the angle of the path of the ball sometimes changed, like with the set in the serve, and we were trying to limit that as much as possible, but there was a lot of different ways that that angle could be changed. So there wasn't really a good way to keep it constant, which was kind of the problem we found with everything in this lab, that you couldn't really control any of the variables, so it made it hard to like learn something about just one variable. So, yeah. Do you guys have any more questions for me? Thank you. Mm -hmm.